that this circle represent the concept a human body. Not the disc, but the circle. The visualization exercise we are going to do now could have used any two-dimensional shape, but I see it as most convenient to use a circle. In the detailing process, I will start by outlining the head. All the parts of the head is representing in this arc, both the inside as the glands of the brain and the teeth and the outside as nose and ears. Then I continue with the arms and the legs. That was the easy part. A somatopic map is one that represents body parts in such way that neighborhood relations are preserved. Reflexological maps are to some degree somatopic maps. When I now come to the trunk, you can see that this will not be a somatopic map. In a somatopic map, the trunk should be represented as one unit, not as the two I choose to use here. This is the same as uh, it's done in foot reflexology. I will come to another such case in a minute. You can see that the whole of the circle is used and the whole body is represented on it. To make this exercise more clear, I will add some more details. For to add details of the face, a part of the arc used for the head will be reallocated. This becomes all the details of the head except from the face and the ears. They become separate parts of the arc this way. Then comes the upper arm, forearm, hand, and similar for the legs. I choose to stop at this detail level, but I will comment on it later. The next step is to draw lines from the body parts to the reflexological projections of them. I start with the most common projection, the classical foot reflexology map, the calf, the thigh, and the trunk, and so on. Then we have come to the details of the head. This is a good time to take you with me on a little detour. I will introduce you to the black swan of reflexology. I have noticed that it is common among reflexologists to claim that there is a lateralization of reflexes. Reflexes on the right side of the body only affects the right side of the body and reflexes on the left side of the body only affects the left side. In other words, Reflexes are not crossing the body. My opinion is that this is wrong. All reflexes affect both sides of the body. It is hard to prove such claim, but if one case of cross reflexes are found, then it, at least the claim that reflexes are not crossing the body is found to be false. I have found a common practice among uh, reflexologists treating persons that have one foot amputated. The foot that is still present is treated for issues related to both sides of the body. This is not a proof that reflexes are crossing, but I feel that it is an indication that supports my opinion. As a consequence, Lines must go from each body part to both reflexological projections. This makes the location on the circle of, for example, the face not so important in this context. Now we have come to an important point. All these reflexes also works the opposite way. If I injury my air 
it is a reflexological reaction that activates the air reflex on my foot and makes it useful for treatment. In the same way, it is the reflexological reaction that makes my air relief when the reflex on the foot is treated. This is a fact that is unknown or ignored by most reflexologists. When we are aware of this, it opens up for some very interesting opportunities. For example, if I hit my foot a little bit too hard into a table leg, and get my little toe sprained. Where would you treat it with reflexology? Some charts tell us that there is a shoulder projection in the area of that little toe. Then try to treat the toe on your shoulder. You might end up with some surprising results. So from now on, see all the lines as p-directional. On each of the body parts there is a projection of a part of the foot. I will now do the same exercise for the next well-known projection, the one on the hand. There are two more well-known projections, face and air. I just uh, let the lines be drawn for these without any further comments. We get a lot of lines. All true, we, we are at a low level of details. At the moment, there are 18 separate body parts sketched on the circle and seven full projections of the body. More important, I have nine projections where I can get treated for my sore toe. The seven full projections plus the two on my shoulders. Some of you might have heard about equibiology or equiboacupuncture. It is a kind of a reflexology with Chinese origin. Even if the word acupuncture is mentioned, you can use any kind of technique you wish. One property of this approach to reflexology is that each bone in the body has its own projection of the full body. Let's see how this affects our circle. In infants there are approximately 270 bones. This gives us potentially 270 projections where I can get treatment for my sore toe. Would you like to go one notch more? Back to poor me kicking my foot into the table. And for a moment, we are also going back to the classical foot reflexology map. Even if I would not let anyone touch my foot in this situation, it should be possible to find a reflex there, a foot projected on my foot. But a foot, wouldn't that contain the full projection of the entire body? A projection on a projection. This will be the same for the equivo approach. On each of those 270 bones in the body, there will be a projection of 270 bones. Each of these can be used for treatment of my toe. 72,900 places on the body to treat my little toe. This implies that more or less anywhere on my body I'm treated, my little toe will be relieved. Or for a person with, with diabetes, anywhere on the body it is treated, it will relieve the diabetes. Does that conform with your experience? No. Let's take a look at the circle again. For convenience, I choose the simple one, the one with nine projections of my little toe. All of these nine projections are different. Some of them are mirrors of each other, 
but still they are different. This tells me that they have different qualities. They will represent different aspects of the constitution of the toe. If all of them should represent all aspects of the toe equally, they necessarily had to be perfectly equal. It would be funny to have nine left foot spread around the body. My conclusion is that they need to represent different aspects or perspectives. Out of these nine projections, which should be used to treat my sore toe? Most of you are foot reflexologists, so it is tempting to believe that most of you would have chosen a foot, more or less by default. But one of these nine projections will be better than the other eight. Why not choose that? There are many other things that can happen to a little toe than sprain. It can be sunburned, it can be frozen, get a blister, get a wart, etc. To me it seems very unlikely that all these issues are best treated through the same projection. It should be the therapist's duty to use the projection that is best for the given situation. I'm now making a big jump to fractals. One property of fractals is self-similarity. Another property is that they are recursive. You can zoom into the picture of a fractal into infinite. A part of the fractal will be similar to all other parts of the fractal, but not exactly equal. Here are some pictures of fractal patterns in the nature. Nautilus shell, broccoli, fern, lungs, three, to give a basic understanding of fractals, I will use a two-branch three-fractal to illustrate the repetition of pattern. The start is just a line. Then the length is adjusted and two branches are added. This operation is repeated for each of the branches. This can be repeated as many times as one wish. This is a very simple pattern, but it makes a nice figure. We can say that the shape of the hole is projected onto itself, just as the projection of the body is projected on the feet. As you can see, the projection is on all levels. The tree has a hologram-like nature. All parts of it contains information about the whole. Can you see this kind of pattern in a human being? In the upper arm we have one bone. In the forearm we have two bones. In the hand it's not so clear, but we have five fingers. The branching repeats. For me this recursive pattern in the human body is obvious, but much more complex. The pattern I see repeated is a kind of torus. To explain why and how is beyond the scope of this presentation. Here is an online application to visualize an interesting thing. By adjusting the position of the two first branches, I change the shape of all sub branches. Imagine that this is not a tree, but a human. Then any changes in it is reflected in all branches, at all levels. This is how I see us humans. We are not parts that work together. We are one. We are holograms. The whole of a person contains all the information about the whole person. Every cell. And it is not the nervous system that facilitates the spreading of this information. 
then back to my little toe. The branches of the tree have different positions relative to the trunk. That relative position is a property of all branches. This is similar to all the 72,900 projections of the toe on my body. They have different positions and those different properties, which should be used. In most reflexology training, you only learn about one map, one projection. The maps in different schools are mostly equal. Maybe it's time to give up the use of these maps, except from when learning the very basic of reflexology. The holographic approach is a new paradigm in reflexology. I can understand if this is too big a step to take for many of you. It is a quantum leap. For some of you, it might be the time to take it now and connect to the body that is to be treated and really listen to what the body says because it says so much, much more than any foot reader can imagine. When I had my first exam in reflexology, a woman was led into me by her husband. She had trouble with moving and was very light sensitive. The light gave her migraine. During the treatment, I noticed a little line in her face unlike anything I had seen before. This was before I had a, any profound knowledge about face reflexology. Discreet, I pointed it out to my teacher, Karl Axel Lind. He responded that I should work on it through what we call System 2. This projection shows the calf as the trunk and the whole foot as the head. I then worked lightly on the side of her heel. The response was powerful. Without going into details, the woman could walk from the treatment without any help and without, and without sunglasses. I listened to her body and I was able to help her without knowing much about her condition. I suppose all of you who are listening to me have quite some experience as reflexologists. I wish to challenge you. Let the maps be for the beginners. The time has come for you to free yourself from any maps and start listening to the hologram you are treating. Listen with your hands and with your eyes. Listen and then treat accordingly. Then we together can figure out how it is best to treat my sore little toe. By cooperating, we can collect experience and knowledge about how to treat different conditions better over time. Here is one contribution from me. One thing I have observed is that people with swollen and watery legs tend to have severe unprocessed emotions. This can be painful. I have not tested thousands of projections to find the best place on the body to treat this condition, but a few. Massage around the middle segment on the second finger. This will increase the flow and reduce the pain. But even this will just give a temporary relief unless the emotions are processed throughout. This picture shows the projection that is used in this case. Thank you for listening.